So, I am a linguist, and as linguistic is not a real job, I am a foreign language teacher. <laughs> yeah. And being a native speaker of Russian language, I came to Tanzania to teach it at the University of Dodoma a couple of years ago. And being a linguist, of course, I started a research on one local language called Gogo. And in my talk, I, I would like to share with you some of the outcomes of this research that made me see language in an unusual way, as a bearer of ecological knowledge. So what knowledge is ecological? It is the knowledge that helps traditional societies to maintain sustainable relationship with their environment. It includes beliefs, traditions, all the wisdom around the nature that is passed from one generation to another orally. Because it is far away from what we call literature and what is considered to be worth writing down the text. So if we have a look at the traditional religions of Bantu peoples, we find out that many of them are worshipping big trees. And you know why? Because they believe the spirits of their ancestors are living there. That's why they don't cut them down. And that's why you, you shouldn't be surprised to see gorgeous Baobab Palace on the way to the Doma. Yeah? And as well as lack of soil erosion, because these giant trees prevent it with their giant roots. If not in religion, we still have a chance to discover ecological knowledge in the language itself, and particularly in proverbs that imply rational use of water and soil. So, for example, in Swahili, it is often said, Majini uhai, that means water is life, implying its reasonable usage. Another source of ecological knowledge is indigenous plant names. And this point I'd like to illustrate with some examples from Gogo language. First of all, for people who speak Gogo, Plants have behavior, they show certain behavior. And here are some of the plants with an active lifestyle. First is Ilemba. So this is a plant that is shaking fast, if you translate it literally. And it is considered to be the decoration to the savanna. Another one is Ilweza. So this is a plant that is spreading around. And this one is Mulanga Chilima, which means a plant that is always looking to the east, that is sunflower. Yeah. Secondly, all plants of the names in Gogo starts with I-O-M-U. Gogo, as any other Bantu language, splits its vocabulary into a set of categories, like people, animals, plants, round objects, and so on. And these categories are marked with specific prefixes. So in Gogo language, plants are marked with I and MU prefixes that are followed by a noun, a verb, or even a phrase that contains the most striking feature of the plant, its behavior, its physical characteristics, it's uh, even a legend associated with this flower. And this is my favorite example, Mubamilambisi. So it is believed that hyena cannot see this plant, so you can hide behind it. Yeah. So this is a legend. Thirdly, the choice between I and MU prefixes is not arbitrary. When I was trying to compose very, very simple sentences with my informants, I came to a strange obstacle. Having come to Elweza, my informant refused to say, this is a beautiful Elweza, or this is a good Elweza. Because he just said, it cannot be beautiful, it cannot be good. I asked why, although on the picture it looked like pretty, you know, with flowers. And he said, because it starts with I. It took me much time to figure out that all I plants in Gogo language are considered to be useless. 
while all MU plants are considered to be useful, yeah, as food, as medicine, as tool. In other words, people who speak Gogo language communicate in this way their attitude to the plant and their knowledge about how to use this plant. Last but not least, as long as Gogo speaks their language, it will remind them in what a beautiful and valuable environment they live, preventing them from destroying it. And as long as we are aware of the ecological knowledge in the language, we will respect it. We will respect its connection to the environment. And that is why, as David Crystal says, language issues should become a part of general ecological thinking. Thank you.